Hi, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. A look at how pets at home help alleviate the anxiety of being under COVID-19 lockdown. Is it time for a universal basic income? The Pope is one of many who says it is. And how the advertising industry is having to adapt from selling dreams during this nightmarish time. And top of our news feed, the power of pets. COVID-19 has forced most people into their homes and there are concerns that all that isolation will be harmful to people's mental well-being. And there is some research which shows that families with pets may be better than households without pets in dealing with being under lockdown. Have a look at this. You want to eat? No, it's not time. You just ate. How happy do videos like this make you? Pets can be a real mood booster, especially cats and dogs, and research backs it up. Being a pet parent can improve mental health and help people feel less alone. In a study by the Human Animal Bond Research Institute, 85% of those surveyed agree pets reduce loneliness. While research by the animal welfare charity Blue Cross suggests 43% of respondents believe their pets are crucial to keeping their mental health in check. And the type of pet doesn't seem to matter. From cats and dogs, to goats, fish, or even snakes. The owners make fewer visits to the doctor and sleep more soundly. Some studies even suggest pets can lower blood pressure in stressful situations. Just interacting with animals on a regular basis improves the performance of simple cognitive tasks, like learning a language and expanding children's vocabulary. It can even increase levels of serotonin and dopamine, the chemicals that trigger feelings of happiness and pleasure. So what actually causes these therapeutic effects? Well, reports show there are several possibilities. The first is companionship, being able to identify another being as important and significant, similar to the bond a mother forms with her child. It gives you a sense of belonging and purpose. Secondly, pets act as social catalysts, so they often help initiate conversation with others. These factors may be particularly important for those at risk of isolation, like the elderly. And this is under normal circumstances. Under lockdown, pets are proving a lifesaver for many, providing companionship, consistency, responsibility, and of course, joy. Those without pets are seeing lockdown as the perfect opportunity to bring one home. As many charities have reported, huge increases in fostering and adoptions. But animal welfare groups are reminding people that a pet is for life not just for lockdown. For now, most are relishing their owner's extra time and attention, however that's expressed. Well, Esso, who did that package and is obsessed with her cat, spoke to Professor Alan Beck, an animal ecologist and the director of the Center for Human Animal Bond at Purdue University in Indiana. She began by asking why we are so obsessed with our pet. She could have asked that for herself. Obviously, we have sensed that animals were important to us forever. I mean, for a long time. Long before any scientific studies, there were, you know, uh, stories and, and anecdotal reports that animals were very, very important. Uh, it's part of literature for a hundred years. You know, many years ago, when I, I was at the University of Pennsylvania, we were interviewing people with or without animals, how they would talk to us and so on. And we made the interesting observation that when the animal is present or when they were talking to their animal, they looked more relaxed. Uh, they would talk quieter, they would smile more, less of an eyebrow uh, ridge. So then we started taking their blood pressure. And sure enough, when people interact with um, an animal in, in any kind of friendly way, uh, there is a relaxation response. They actually have 
uh, a drop in blood pressure. And so I've been looking at, okay, why would you expect such a response? Well, and it turns out that there are probably three major issues. One, all people, all cultures seem to have an affinity towards nature. That is, you know, since we ourselves are animals and evolved in nature, uh, we have incorporated as part of natural selection an appreciation of nature. And basically our pets are nature on demand. Another uh, interesting thing when you, uh, domestication is nothing more than keep selecting for tameness. One of the consequences of tameness is you retain juvenile qualities all of our domestic animals and our favorite animals actually have a lot of that infant releaser. And so there's a dedication to the animal already. And then what's wonderful is that we are so attracted to some of our animals, a dog would be a very good example, is that we have such attachment that we start searching for what's the best description. And we use the metaphor, it's a member of the family. And so once you're taken in to be as a member of the family, uh, you have some other wonderful possible health consequences. For instance, you're less lonely. We find uh, encouragement in, in touch and contact. Well, when you pet a dog or a cat uh, in, in a nice relaxed way, you have that same social relaxation. And one of the things that we do with each other that's so very important is it allows us to stay in the present by talking with each other now, uh, by doing things together, playing cards, uh, walking together. You stay in the present. And if you're in the present, you are more relaxed. Much of anxiety is bemoaning the past and worrying about the future. If you stay in the present, you do much better. And animals just do that as well. And good advice there. Okay, let's take a look at some other COVID-19 related stories that you may have missed. Social distancing will need to be maintained in some form until at least 2022. Writing in the journal Science, researchers say a resurgence of COVID-19 is likely when lockdown measures are relaxed later this year. And until a vaccine is widely available and has been widely administered, we need to be prepared that this disease will stalk humanity until late 2024. A NASCAR driver called Kyle Larson used a racial epithet during a live-streamed esports race. They're racing virtually because NASCAR is off because of the lockdown. He has been suspended by his NASCAR team and his racing team um, have said that he had to release this public relations video where he said sorry. And staying with Americans doing dumb things, fake wrestling is going to be allowed to be filmed again in Florida after the governor there said it was an essential business. WWE is back up and running this week and will continue despite other industries being locked down. A universal basic income, a dream for centuries of people who want to see a fairer, more equitable world, is gaining support as the pandemic destroys economies all over the globe. Faisal has some details. Universal basic income, or UBI. If you haven't heard of it, you probably will soon. It's got everyone talking, even the Pope. As part of his Easter address, Pope Francis wrote, this may be the time to consider a universal basic wage which would acknowledge and dignify the noble essential tasks you carry out. So what is a universal basic income? It's a fairly radical economic plan that ensures every person gets an amount of money from the state on a regular basis. No strings attached. Every adult gets it, old or young, rich or poor, employed or not. The idea is that with their physiological needs, such as water, food, clothing and shelter taken care of, people will be more likely to seek work doing things they enjoy. It's not a new idea either. It's been around for centuries since Sir Thomas More's Utopia was published in 1516. In 2015, Finland experimented carrying out a basic income trial. It ended after two years and found that while it boosted happiness and lowered stress among participants, it did not lead to greater employment rates. 
Now, since the year's great lockdowns kicked in, the global economy has been forced to pause, and the world is facing a calamity that could rival the Great Depression of 1929. Millions are at risk of being unable to afford essentials like food, utility bills, and a place to live, and the idea of the universal basic income has come to the fore again. Spain is one of the nations worst hit by the pandemic. After a month of travel bans and curfews, and more than 800,000 jobs lost in March, its economic minister has hinted that a basic income may be on the cards. It's the first European country to make such a move. However, just how universal the program will be is yet to be seen. In the United States, the idea is gaining support on both sides of the political divide. Republican Senator Mitt Romney. And、Bernie Sanders have called on the government to implement a form of UBI. Trials are being carried out around the world, from Kenya to the Netherlands. While implementing the idea would require significant economic reform, it may be a post-coronavirus route back to prosperity that's worth considering. Well, like everything else, the advertising industry has taken a major hit because of COVID-19. Production on adverts has been put on hold, and some have been pulled because they no longer reflect our current reality. Adama has more. It should come as no surprise that the tone of TV adverts has changed. Advertising is all about selling us temptations and dreams, shopping, dining out. And going on holiday, but the world is in lockdown, and social distancing is the norm. So the advertising industry is finding new and creative ways to alter its messaging. Take, for instance, travel ads. Hotels.com is using its mascot, Captain Obvious, to encourage people to wash their hands and stay at home while pushing its brand. And while some of us are gritting our teeth at cancelled gallivanting. South African tourism offers words of hope. We will do the things that matter with the people we love again. Before COVID-19, it was already a challenging time for the traditional ad industry because of greater spending on digital spots. Traditional ad spending is expected to fall by 12% this year, according to media research group Magna. But it might also turn out to be a bumpy ride for even Facebook and Google in this pandemic. Making ads has changed a lot under current health guidance, but digital agencies like Tag are not giving up. CGI and virtual studios are getting the work in place of traditional photographers and filmmakers. CGI is achieving enormous amounts.、Um, the way that CGI and AI are adapting to create new things all the time means that actually you don't need to have had the original shoot. So all of the risks around location management, finding the right people, actually can be avoided. Consumers also want a different kind of marketing during this pandemic. Data insights and consulting company Kantar surveyed 25,000 people in 30 markets. 75% said they want to be informed on how best to weather the outbreak. But three quarters said ads shouldn't exploit COVID-19 to promote their brands, and 40% said humour shouldn't be used. One Minute Briefs is putting these demands to the test. Its 23,000-strong online community comes up with daily ad briefs for companies. If it's to advertise or promote something every single weekday,、uh, and we wanted to just create some fun briefs、uh, for them in the first few days of the. Of the、uh, The news of the pandemic.、Um, off the back of that, we then start to realise that the community was very engaged, and we could actually use the platform to relay messages from the government,、um, from the likes of stop panic buying to、uh, social distancing, staying at home, and also messages of support for the NHS as well. So, in these uncertain times, resourcefulness, creativity, and the public's input could be the key to making ads that the public will still watch and listen to. Okay, that's all from the newsfeed team. You'll find us 24/7 on YouTube. Stay at home, Abdekal Elenika. Wash your hands. See you tomorrow.